Hey, everybody. As always, thanks for listening. This is a special edition of the podcast today. We are out in the middle of an industrial section in Beaumont, Texas. I think it's called Industrial Fire Rescue Center. And uh, we've actually just uh, had a little uh, demonstration of firefighting and a new uh, environmentally friendly product that we're going to talk about. And so today my guest on the show is Mark Holder. Yes, sir. Mark, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Well, so Mark, tell us what company you're with. I am with uh, American Styrenix in Saint, for out of St. James, Louisiana. American Styrenix. Yes. Okay. All right. So you guys... Or we make styrene. You make styrene. That's right. Okay. All right. For those who aren't watching on the YouTube and and, and can't see on the uh, on the audio, uh, you're kind of young. You don't have much experience with this, do you? <laughs> well, I'm not as young as maybe I look. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I've been uh, fighting industrial fires and involved with the emergency management thereof uh, for the last 35 years. For 35 years. Yes, wow. sir. Wow. Okay. I bet you got some stories. I've uh, got a few. I can probably tell you a few. <laughs> well, we like stories on yeah. this. So let's talk about fire safety. Okay. Uh, so you say you got 35 years experience in yes, this. Sir. What's the difference in fire safety and firefighting well, over that I, course of time? You know, we have, we have come a very long way. Uh, in regards to I'm good I, that's what I was hoping would be the answer equipment. you know <laughs> yeah yeah no we've come a long way with equipment and training um, and then the application of that training and drills practice scenarios uh, we, we have to keep the emergency response stuff you know at the forefront and if we if we don't and if, if facilities or <laughs> individuals get rocked to sleep over a period of time then you may not be ready when time happens, you know, and, and it's not if, it's when. So uh, I will tell you that American Styrenix in St. James, the last significant event was 24 years ago. 24 years ago. That's right. And we just had one uh, it, June 21st, which was a significant fire that we had. So there was 24 years in between those events. That's right. So I will tell you, it's really easy for folks to get rocked to sleep. That's, that's what I call it. Um, and it's real easy to say, well, that's not going to happen here. Or it's real easy to say um, that, you know, we're, we're ready for these things, but we're not really worried about it because it's not going to happen. Uh, so and how do you combat that complacency? Well, you do it through drills and training and you keep things at the forefront. Uh, any industrial facility to make something, the production is king. That, that's, you know, that's how we survive sure. is, is the production. So when it comes time to buy fire trucks and foam trailers and a foam supply and nozzles and those things that tools of the trade, so to speak, um, you, you really have to spend some time justifying those things, but all in the name of preparedness and all in the name of safety for, for, our, for our responders. So let's talk about the fire. You don't just put these fires out with water. You know? No, in my short, humble time, I've learned that a lot of these industrial fires you don't extinguish. Um, you capture and control, and then you process out as much as you can. Okay, I understand the containment part. Capture okay, and control. You, yeah, okay, capture and control. Yep. Because obviously you don't want to go in anywhere else. That's okay? right. All right, but then you, you don't extinguish it, you just let it burn out? Is that what you do? Well, you process it out. So there's moves that the, that, that the operators will make in the process to lessen the effects of that fire. So they'll close valves, they'll operate other pieces of equipment, they'll, they'll block in vessels and stop the flow of materials. They'll, they'll do that all while the fire's going and we have capture and control. And that allows them to bring down that unit or bring down that process area safer. You just let it burn itself out. You don't try to extinguish it. No, because that's what I saw today. <laughs> well, we don't want to just let it burn because that continues to create damage and exposure. Yeah, and the air. And the air. Yep, that, that continues to do that. So, as quickly as we can, you know, it's like it's kind of like hitting a big red button, but we don't have a red button. Okay, I got you. But we have to make a bunch of other a bunch of other moves in the process to lessen the effects. And all while that's going on to save equipment and the rest. And all while that's going on, we have uh, we have the firefighting measures, the capture and control, and then foam application. Okay, that's what I wanted to get to. That's why we were out here today. We were doing yep. some testing on some foam application. The foam that you used 35 years ago when you started, 
uh, over the past 35 years, yep. they've discovered that uh, maybe that's not exactly... Uh, it's not good for you. Not good for you. That's what yeah. they say. <laughs> okay. Yep. So, so, it's, so we've actually figured out that it's, it's toxic. To, to humans and to the environment and that sort of thing and that, yeah. that's that's a particular kind of foam called a triple f a triple f so what does that mean equus film forming foam okay all right the a triple f uh, forms a polymeric membrane uh, when it's applied to a hydrocarbon so when you apply that polymeric membrane it stretches out and it suppresses vapor and uh it won't let the flammable vapors come up and ignite okay when you talk about 35 years of foam development, uh, when I first started, we had protein foam. And protein foam was made out of, you know, hooves and hair and stuff. Okay, all right. And then we went to a synthetic protein, uh, all kind of different brands. And then from there, we went to a fully synthetic protein, or it's fully synthetic foam. And SCA Triple F. And SCA Triple F. Now, the synthetic protein had a, it, it would form, it would, it would form a layer also, a barrier if you will, but the fully synthetic AFFF, that was the good stuff. That's the stuff that really, really worked. Uh, and it worked well. They put the fires out and all kinds of things, but probably not so good for the environment. And why is that? Uh, it's got fluorinated compounds. Okay, all right, okay. And, and they, work, they work really, really well. Now, each, each manufacturer uh, had the, kind of their own version of the AFFF, and it, it all, it all worked. It all worked really good, and even even with some of the environmental concerns, uh, firefighters are pretty hesitant to get rid of it because it works so well. It works really, really good. And uh, but now they're from protein to synthetic protein to full synthetic. Now with the concerns of AFFF, uh, there are some non-fluorinated foams that are that are starting to surface. Okay, but they don't work as well. I think it physically just takes more of that foam uh, to accomplish what AFFF did, uh, but it does work. Uh, we've, you know, we out here today. We've demonstrated that that there is a non-fluorinated foam that does work. And you guys demonstrated it with this event that you had back this past summer, right? That's right. And our uh, our fire, uh, we. We controlled that fire, controlled the ground fire, and ultimately put that fire out with a non-fluorinated foam. Okay, and so what's really significant about that is uh, when you spray that foam all over the place, and and uh, I heard you describing the the fire uh, in the demonstration. Uh, it was a benzene fire, I believe you said, wasn't it? Yes. Okay, so you had some, some hydrocarbons leaked and that sort of thing, yeah. and it went off into the water, and, and so you had hydrocarbon. So, so you had the same problem with this foam. So you with had, the HFLF. So, so, so yeah, so this foam goes off into the water with all those fluorinated uh, you know, compounds mm -hmm. and whatnot, but this new non-fluorinated product that we were out here testing today uh, you, you didn't have that problem. You didn't. It, so what? What would happen with AFFF is okay. You put the fire out, but now you got to clean up the mess of AFFF. That's right. And with this particular one that we were out here demonstrating today, you don't have that problem. That's that right? right. I will tell you that with all the concerns you have uh, with the environment during a hydrocarbon fire, with all those concerns, uh, this foam was not the concern. And it did the job. And it did the job. The VP of Operations for Vitali Industrial, and one of our big, biggest products right now is an AFFF, AFFF alternative firefighting foam, which that's what we're here to talk about today and show, showcase to the petrochemical industry. What are we calling it, NFFF? NFFF, non-fluorinated firefighting Yeah, foam. we'll talk about that here in just a minute. And so, uh, Wayne, you're the uh, Director of Supply Chain at Vitali. We are looking to revolutionize how Fire foam is applied and distributed. We've got a great turnout today. You guys are, are the, the distributors for uh, this, what we're calling non-fluorinated firefighting formula. 
Uh, it's called uh, Green Sheet. Yes. Okay. And battalion. And if you want to get Green Sheet, folks, and you're going to want this uh, this Green Sheet material, and we'll talk about why here in just a minute. But uh, you need to get it from uh, Battalion Industrial. Why are you coming up with a new product, a new firefighting phone product? So AFFF is the stuff that we've been using for 30 plus years. It um, has a chemical in it called PFAS, which is a forever chemical. It um, never breaks down in the environment. It's kind of like glitter. Once it gets out there, it's really hard to clean it up and get it all back. And it's um, also not, we figured out over the past 30 years or so, it's not good for you, right? No, in fact, it's it's terrible for you. Um, it causes cancer. It takes over 10,000 years, they estimate, to start breaking down, but we just keep putting it back into the environment. It's, you know, it goes all the way through the food chain. It, it's just really, really, really bad stuff. The cancers that it causes are just awful. Um, the increase in cancer rates for firefighters has skyrocketed, you know, over the last 30 years since they've started using this stuff. It's just, it's bad all the way around. Um, it's being banned pretty much universally. Um, a lot of Europe, um, Australia, uh, there's 24 states in the U.S. that have started the phase out or complete ban of AFFF. Texas is not far behind. Um, it's just real bad stuff. You know it's bad stuff when they're banning it worldwide. <laughs> 100%. Okay, okay but, 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 but the problem is, 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 you know, fires anywhere, but especially in, you know, industry and in chemical plants and that sort of thing, uh, that's, that'll, that'll kill you too. Yeah, well, that's, that's the big problem with AFFF ban is that the alternative formulas are not as effective as AFFF. So it's taking them about twice the time to put a, the fire out and twice the product, which is very expensive and also a huge risk for facilities. That's one of the reasons why our product is top choice, is that we perform as well as AFFF, or as close to AFFF as, as you can get. And um, we're also fully non-toxic and we're biodegradable in five days. So that means once you guys are training with it, or if you have a fire at your facility, you can spray it and you don't have to do all the costly waste removal cleanup associated with AFFF, which is life changing. It's huge, huge, huge cost savings for refineries. We're talking millions and millions of dollars. Well, there you go, folks. I, I, I don't know what else, uh, I don't know what else we need to say. I, I thought it was gonna take us longer to, to, to flesh all that out, but uh, so Wayne, what you did, uh, you got out there on, LinkedIn and various different digital media and that sort of thing. And uh, you actually had over 1,300 inquiries into this demonstration. The response that we had is, is astounding. I mean, it's, it's amazing that, you know, so many people are now see seeing the light to say, okay, well, okay, we have this huge problem. You know, there's deadlines that's coming up and we need to fix it. And if this company can be able to solve our problem in a short amount of time frame, you know, let's 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 check them out. Let's take a look at them and see what they can do. You know, one of the interesting things that we didn't expect is we've had a lot of companies ask if they can bring their drones out here and record the burn demonstration so that they can then send it to their other facilities. So we've got three or four different companies bringing drones which uh, hopefully none of them crash into each other <laughs> well, <laughs> or into the fire. I, I, I think you've got OGGN out here with a drone yeah, too. Yeah, OGGN so has a drone too. Yeah. So we'll probably make that available. We're pretty excited. We're, we're putting our money where our mouth is. We're not afraid to show what our product can do, answer tough questions and uh, we're excited. Thanks for listening to OGGN, the world's largest and most listened to podcast network for the oil and energy industry. If you like this show, leave us a review and then go to OGGN.com to learn about all our other shows. Don't forget to sign up for our weekly newsletter. This show has been a production of the Oil & Gas Global Network.